Welcome to Zooming In. I'm Simon Gao. We are here again with Mr. Wang Weiluo. You were just talking about the cracks appearing on the Three Gorges Dam, but is this different from the dam deforming? Is the dam actually deforming? This is their annual report, the report of the Three Gorges project. Every year, there is a section about monitoring the project. It includes deformation. The deformation of the foundation, the deformation of the top, the vertical deformation, and the leakage problems. Right? A lot of experts in China didn't say anything about leakage when they explained things. Right? These are all from their own reports, and I just pulled it out and told the Chinese people. What I'm saying is that those experts didn't tell you the worst state, the worst deformation. They just picked out one that they think is reliable. Let's talk about, for example, the ship lock, the deformation of its sloping walls. The thing is, there's already a tilt of more than 70 millimeters in this slope. At the time of their design, they said that if the tilt was no more than 10 millimeters, they thought it would be acceptable. It's over 70 millimeters now, right? Some people would say the Three Gorges Dam hasn't fallen down yet, right? It hasn't fallen down yet. The first thing we're talking about here is the risk. If you take an example of an unstable house, someone would tell you you can't go and live in it, right? But they won't tell you if the house would fall down or when it would fall down. No one says anything about that. It's still in a trial operation, and the general approval process should have started in 2014 and ended in 2016. The person in charge of approval is Wang Yang, the vice premier of the state council at that time. He is responsible for the approval check. However, Wang Yang was the former CCP secretary in Chongqing City. He also knows what it means by signing the acceptance report of the Three Gorges project, doesn't he? So he put it off. He put it off until 2018, when he became a member of the Standing Committee of the Politburo. So the task was no longer his. As an aside, why didn't Wang Yang sign the letter? One of the reasons is his personal relationship. Wang Yang's daughter is married to the grandson of General Zhang Aiping. General Zhang Aiping, who led the military security research for the Three Gorges project that began in 1959, reported to Mao Zedong before the Cultural Revolution that they couldn't guarantee the safety of the Three Gorges project under the circumstances at that time. This is General Zhang Aiping's conclusion, and it's the only official conclusion of the Chinese military. Then, when it came to the 1980s, Deng Xiaoping wanted to push this project forward. He said Zhang Aiping was too cowardly, so Zhang Aiping hasn't been to the Three Gorges project since then. Zhang insists that modern warfare is about surprise attacks. He spoke for the People's Liberation Army, saying they couldn't guarantee the safety of the Three Gorges project, so he didn't travel to the Three Gorges to pay respects. He never went there. So he didn't sign the document, and after 2016, the acceptance work ended up with no definite conclusion. The conclusion of the project is still just hanging there. The biggest risk of the Three Gorges project is that no one is responsible for the project. Wasn't it Li Peng who wanted to build this Three Gorges Dam? He said in his Three Gorges diary that since 1989, the decision on the Three Gorges project has all been made under the leadership of Comrade Jiang Zemin. In his Three Gorges diary, Li Peng mentioned Jiang Zemin the most times, more than 100 times. In his report, in his Three Gorges diary, Zhao Ziyang's name doesn't even appear. Don't you think it's impressive? He knew in the 1980s that something might happen to Zhao Ziyang in the future. Zhao Ziyang's name never appeared in his diary. So he wanted to push the responsibility off onto Jiang Zemin. He put the responsibility. They have long put the responsibility to the National People's Congress or NPC. It's decided by vote. 
It was decided by the thousands of NPC deputies raising their hands. The NPC is the final decision-making body. In fact, these deputies do not know about these things. What do they know? They don't know anything, do they? A third of them didn't vote for it. And the NPC deputies, they are not responsible for the wrong decisions. You should know this. In the parliamentary system, members are not responsible for mistakes in decision-making, aren't they? They're not legally responsible. The same for the congressmen. The congressmen don't have this, neither did the deputies to China's National People's Congress have the responsibility. Two projects in China were approved by the NPC by vote. One is the Yellow River Sanmenxia Dam. Who is responsible for the mistakes? Who is in charge of it? No one, right? Another is the Three Gorges of the Yangtze River. So the most serious problem of the Three Gorges project is that no one is responsible. Li Peng wrote a poem and said, The grand picture is drawn by all people. The grand picture is drawn by many people, isn't it? You just mentioned that the Three Gorges Project publishes an internal journal that evaluates whether the Three Gorges Dam has met all the standards. So speaking of deformation, are there any other things that you could go over in detail? What do you actually see? How is it different from what the rest of the world knows? Let me read something for you. For leakage monitoring, about the time when the water storage reached 175 meters high in 2012, the total seepage flow of the north and south slope were 737.64 liters per minute and 97.37 respectively. And the leakage flow increased by 236.06 liters per minute after the water seepage. He said that it was caused by rainfall, right? And here, the maximum cumulative displacement of the north-south lateral volley surface of the middle isolation pier is 32.29 millimeters. These are all written by themselves, right? Hmm. What do you make of those numbers? Are they within an acceptable range? He didn't publish the acceptable range that he was talking about. So as we talked about earlier, when the Three Gorges project was being discussed, some of them said it was 10 millimeters. The deformation was allowed, but now it's over 70 millimeters. Then let's compare it with another reservoir, Meishan Reservoir in Anhui province. When the displacement of the top of the dam turned by 8 millimeters, two professors from Hohai University said that a displacement of 8 millimeters is already a huge displacement, which would affect the safety of the dam. Yet for the Three Gorges Dam, the experts said that we have a 30 millimeter displacement, and it's okay, it's under control. If that's the case, make him publish the control standards to the people and let the people know about so the last thing I want to point out here is that during this year, throughout this whole process, many have seen things on WeChat. There was information for the people living in the areas past Yichang City in the Yangtze River Basin to flee. That was on WeChat. This information on WeChat has been on Chinese websites for a long time. Later, this architect, Wang Xiaoquin, came out to refute the rumor, saying that the information on WeChat was not written by him, but by someone else. So we obviously know the person who put this on WeChat was providing false information. If we compare it to when the epidemic started, when Dr. Li Wenliang said this is SARS, there are already seven cases of SARS, when he sent this on WeChat, he was called to the District Health Commission only five hours later, and one day later he was summoned to the police station and chastised. Didn't that happen? The interval was quick. Yet this... 
Such information survived on Chinese websites for a long time, yet the Chinese government didn't ban it. Why didn't they ban it? Just like the videos of the dam breaking, they didn't ban it either. It also circulated on Chinese websites. Why? Its purpose was to make people learn a little bit. Oh, that's a big risk. And then they would come out and say it's not true, but they were still slowly releasing this risky information to the Chinese people so that they could be prepared. Otherwise, they wouldn't be prepared for what's going to happen to them. That's my opinion, because otherwise it could... China could have done what it did to Li Wenliang, deleted it right away and arrested the person right away, right? What we are primarily talking about is, from an engineering perspective, what are the latent dangers of the dam? If there were numerous consecutive natural disasters, would it increase the chances of a dam collapsing? Let's look at the fifth peak flood. That flood raised water levels in the city of Tuntan to 191.63 meters. The flow of that flood was over 74,000 cubic meters per second. This is the highest water level that the monitoring station in Tuntan has observed since it was built. But China did not say that this was the highest flow of flood water. In 1981, there was a flood in Sichuan, also in the city of Chongqing. The water level in Chongqing at that time was 191.41 meters. It was 21 centimeters below that of Tuntan. The flow at that time was over 87,000 cubic meters, over 10,000 times more. They have said that the water level is the highest it has been since 1939, but the flow rate is less than in 1981. In 1981, the water flow rate was 10,000 cubic meters more. In 1981, we didn't hear of any disasters from 87,000 cubic meters of water flow. The natural storage capacity at the Three Gorges section of the river is over 10 billion cubic meters. When a flood passed through the Three Gorges River section and arrived at the city of Yichang, it would shrink to 71,000 cubic meters per second. This is how it naturally dispersed the flooding. So at that time, for the riverbed past Yichang, it had a natural ability to contain floods. It mitigated the entire flood that time. So because of that, the flood in 1981 didn't cause any major disasters, and there was only damage in Chongqing and Sichuan, but there was no other damages downstream on the Yangtze. So in the early stages of building the Three Gorges Dam, there was one person in the opposition group named Lu Qinkan who studied flooding on the Yangtze for his entire life. He conducted research from 1937 until his death. He knew the most. He divided the flooding of the Yangtze into three types. One type was seen in 1981, where there was only flooding upstream of the Three Gorges. He said for these floods, the dam would make a bad situation worse, wherein the dam could only raise its water level, just like what happened this year. The flow wasn't as much as 1981, but the water level was higher. Another kind is where flooding only happens mid and downstream, which happens beyond Yichang. Also like this year's flooding, as well as the type that happened before the first instance of flooding this year. In the first instance of flooding this year, Wuhan reached the fourth highest water level in its history. The Three Gorges Dam basically didn't do anything to control that flooding. He said that since this flooding only occurs at the mid and downstream areas of the Yangtze, the Three Gorges Dam would do nothing to prevent that flooding. The dam can only have some impact on flooding that occurs along the entire river. But he also had said that its storage capacity is too small, so its influence on preventing flooding would be small. So in 2020, during the fifth instance of flooding, the Three Gorges Dam, the impact it had was very disappointing to everyone. 
Why would they be disappointed? Because when they started making the Three Gorges Dam, when it passed through government decisions, the politicians and experts sang the praises of the Three Gorges Dam too loudly. The average citizens put way too much hope in it, because the amount of money from ordinary citizens that went into it was also too much. According to what Chinese officials say, the whole point of making a water reservoir is to prevent flooding. But you said the biggest reason for this flooding was because excessive development and building these reservoirs. Would you please explain that? There is a strong Chinese tradition of construction for hydrology. That is, a culture around water is well developed. But by no means do the Chinese excel at building dams. By 1949, when the People's Republic of China was founded, there were only about 20 reservoirs built inside China. Almost all of them were built by the Japanese during World War II, such as the Opulent Reservoir, Water Wind Reservoir, Nalda Ocean Reservoir, Calmhead Lake Reservoir, etc. These reservoirs were built by the Japanese. In 1950, Mao Zedong sent a Chinese delegation on water conservancy to the Soviet Union, headed by Zhang Guangdou. They stayed in the Soviet Union for a long time. When they came back, they said, "We've learned the real thing, which is to build a reservoir dam, a reservoir dam that is both flood and drought resistant." Recently, Wang Hao, a scholar in the Chinese Academy of Engineering, said that the function of reservoirs is. I think he introduced it very well. The function of a reservoir is to store the flood in the rainy season. The flood that will cause a disaster is stored in the reservoir and let it be used during the drought. This is the function of a reservoir. So Chinese people have this concept of reservoir design in their heads. His theory comes from Stalin's book, The Political Economy. He said, "We have the tools to conquer nature." He came up with an example of building a reservoir, which can turn floods into a resource that we can use during a drought. So, since then, China has taken reservoir construction as a major drought relief and flood control measure. Now there are 98,000 reservoirs in China. 98,000 reservoirs. There are 52,000 reservoirs in the Yangtze River Basin and 8,184 reservoirs in Sichuan Province. If all these reservoirs can do what the scholarly Wang Hao said, we can store the flood in the reservoir and use it after October. By the time of the spring drought the following year, China would have no food shortage problems. What conditions must be satisfied to accomplish this? First, the storage capacity of the reservoir should absolutely be large, right? Absolutely large. Second, the dam of the reservoir should be absolutely safe, absolutely safe. Third, flood prevention should definitely be the first goal, not the last. And in the course of our economic reform, the right to use the reservoir has been privatized. The owner of the reservoir bought the right from the government, so he's going to make money off the dam. So we can put the amount of privilege from owning the dams in order. First, protecting oneself. Since the quality of the reservoirs is not good, the quality of China's reservoir dam is not good. So the primary concern in the middle of the flood is to protect oneself. The first point is protecting oneself. Second, for one's self-interest. For their own interests, that is, for those who have the right of use, their economic interests, for example, generating electricity, supplying water, selling water, their economic interests—that's the second in importance. The third is what they claim to be as helping others. They'll only help you guard against floods when they can. If they can't, then they just say sorry. This is the privilege order under that system. So we said that the dam failure rate in China is twice the world average. There is information that says from 1954 to 2010, nearly 3,000 reservoirs in China failed. 
but we know very little, right? Some people may know that there are probably hundreds of reservoirs that have failed. Actually, more than 3,000 reservoirs broke. How did they break? How many people died? Nobody knows. Alright, thank you so much, Mr. Wang. I really appreciate it. Thank you.